What's cracking everybody? Just so you guys know, this is the fourth video I've tried recording for this channel today. I recorded one for the other channel. Um, on this channel, everything's getting demonetized right now uh, without any explanation. Um, even when I ask for a human review, it's being upheld. So I don't know what's going on. So I'm coming to Jamie, the king, Mr. Invincible. I'm picking a random spot in this video, and we're going to go from here. Hopefully you enjoy the new video. Let's go. Gets in there and will cause infection. Ooh. And it, it's very effective. You know. Well, <clears throat> a few days later, Felipe gets released from AdSeg. Goes back to his cell. Guys come over and give him stuff because they know he probably needs some few things. <clears throat> Somebody had already gone in and cleaned up his cell. All the blood and all the stuff like that had been one of the, one of the friends of his cleaned it. We get the huh? Oh man, I do, do. I need to go back. I would think we need to go back, right? Because it already sounds like crap. Oh yeah, 143. Let's go right around here. My bad, you guys. All right. Took his TV, took you know, his radio, took some canteen stuff. Oh, shoot. Hold on. We need to go Comes further back. back. Hold on. And they ended up having uh, these young uh, Southerners coming in. And um, they um, they didn't allow, nor funny enough, they didn't, Northerners could not get on the Folsom line. And it's a Northern prison. You know, if a northern showed up, they would immediately be locked up to be turned around, be shipped back out. Could you explain to Jen what <clears throat> northerners and southerners okay. are in California? Is it like um, in the UK? Yeah, yeah, you got, uh, you you got the. Uh, Let's hear this. Uh, Noista Familia, oh. you know, which is the northerners, uh, and the Mexican Mafia, which is the southerners. Based. So he's already wrong. Everybody that knows knows. Those organizations have nothing to do with being southern or northern. But let him tell us. Basically. And, and the next, with, uh, with the Hispanic uh, gangs and stuff, your northern Mexicans, basically their families had been there longer, and a lot of time the northern Mexicans lined with black gangs. You know, that was their kind of thing. <clears throat> Most of them didn't really speak much in the way of Spanish, except what they call Spanglish, where they kind of blended all the stuff. The Southern Mexicans, their families were still a couple of generations from coming across the border and becoming legitimate and stuff. They spoke a lot more Spanish. But Meanwhile, there are gangs, there are barrios in Southern California that are over 100 years old. But apparently, because we're closer to the border, we just got here. <laughs> this guy, man, they're really soaking it up. Look, they're intently listening. But they also had their own versions of Spanish that was different than their parents' Spanish. <clears throat> then you had the Paisas, and the Paisas were basically, if you're a Mexican national or, or from Central America and things like that. Quite honestly, as far as I was always concerned, the Paisas were probably the more dangerous one because they lived in you know places where it was violent virtually all the time. Again, I mentioned this in the video the other day. And I'm going to reiterate, the violence that we see in Mexico over the last 20 years is not the violence that was going on 40 years ago. He's talking about 1984, 1985. So he's making up stories, obviously. If you pay attention to the details and you look at the violence in Mexico back then, this is a very, very strange character, but he has ulterior motives. On the streets, you know, cartels and, you know, and, and, and all that. It's just, uh, so when they came across, when they got in prison, sometimes they became soldiers for the other groups and stuff like that. But when they were in them, their own right, they would be pretty much separated from it. Now, within the Northerners, you had other splinter groups like Fresno. You originally had the F-14ers, 14 for the letter N, 13 for the, you know, for... M for the Mexican mob. So it's this kind of thing. But uh, <clears throat> they ended up, uh, the Fresno Bulldogs got tired of being used as a buffer. Uh, somebody in the northern groups would do something against the southern groups. Southern groups wanted, you know, to get reparations for it. 
and uh, they'd go and the shot callers talk, and they'd say, oh, go stab one of the Fresno boys. That's okay. And the fr- Where is – I don't think I don't think he did time at all. I really don't. I think he's a correction officer. Um, or if he did, you know, he's made statements of people he's been around. I'm pretty sure he was in CMC. Um, this is a strange, strange character to have been around during the era that he's saying he was around and have zero history. Correct. This is, this is amazing. I don't know where he could have done time. Fresno boys got tired of being that buffer. You know, so they became bulldogs and then they weren't really aligned with anybody and they fought with everybody. And then there was another group that had been was Northerners and they were the San Jose Sharks. Funny <laughs> enough. <laughs> the bulldogs uh, is a symbol of the Fresno State University, Fresno City College. They have the bulldogs. So and in San Jose, they have the San Jose Sharks you know, uh, sports team. So the sharks being still aligned with the northerners would oftentimes have tattoos put on of a great white shark holding a bulldog in its mouth as a way of basically saying, this is what we think of you. Da, da, da. And of course, you know that if you get those two guys together, there's got to be a dish issue about it. So anyway, but Philippe, he just, he was just kind and considered and all this stuff. So, it was right in the 2003, 2004 time. They brought this change of these guys in. And they saw Philippe had this little garden. And they made demands. You're going to start bringing us this up. What prison is this? Anybody that saw the, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm doing it. I can't, I, there's only so much Jamie Morgan I can take. There's only so much Google eyes I can take between him and Sean. Um, and really no one asking him to clarify or why, I mean, the dude is dressed like a railroad guy, right? You're going to bring us that up, blah, 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 and we're not paying you. You know, you're an old man, we'll fuck you off, and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, because that's how Rasa talked to each other. And where was Jamie at during this conversation that he's aware of all the details? I think he was right in the report. Well, Philippe. Also was in a hobby. And at the time, he, he would do modeling clay stuff. And we weren't allowed to have kilns, but we could have air dry clay. And one of the things he was allowed to have was a wire to cut through the clay, you know, with the two things. It's a typical. But you could also pull the, the copper cable out of the cable that we put in the wall. But let him tell you, the officers actually allowed people to have a uh, wire like that. Cool. <clears throat> you know, you're allowed to have that. Um, he was also allowed to have <clears throat> an exacto knife with a little set <clears throat> that had small saws because he cut small wood like basswood. <clears throat> he would do that to build boxes for things or whatever he was doing. <clears throat> but he did these little things sold in the hobby shop. So one day <clears throat> he goes to Chow, comes back. Found out that the guards hadn't locked his cell fast enough. Somebody ran in there, ransacked, took a bunch of his stuff. Okay, I need to know what prison this is. That doesn't happen at a, on a, on a level 4, 180. Uh, that doesn't happen at a level 4, 2, set. I, I don't know where where this guy is that people are running in people's cells and stealing. That's the, I, Jailhouse thief is the only thing worse than that is a sex offender. That's how, that's how bad a jailhouse thief is looked at. You get caught stealing from anybody, everybody wants you. Right. Took his TV, took you know, his radio, took some canteen stuff. He comes back, he asks about, and most of the guys tell him, well, I didn't see anything, I didn't see anything, which, of course, is pretty common. But there were a couple of the black guys on the tier that didn't really give a shit, and they said, yeah, you know, those guys down there took your shit, you know. And we don't care because they ain't going to come after us anyway, but we're just going to. Yeah. This is so believable. He always knows the exact details to other races' issues. 
And then he knows that the blacks are willing to put themselves in the way of, I don't know which group it is, but it seems like the Southern, that they're willing to put their nose in that business. And how does he know about it? Huh. Let you remember, just letting you know, because we respect you, Philippe. Oh, Philippe. Okay, so a couple weeks later, Philippe's had a whole bunch of stuff grow. He's brought a bunch of stuff back. Cops let him bring it back. They'd go through the strip out search and stuff, and the cops would set it off to the side and give it to him when he came through. <clears throat> so Philippe goes up, goes to his cell. And the guy comes, jumps on his door and tells him, when, uh, when you get your next package, you got to pay us to allow you to stay on this tier. And he goes, okay. And that weekend, he was getting a package. His name had already come out on the list. That's how they knew he had a package coming. <clears throat> so he goes, he gets his package, brings it back, puts it in his cell. So the guys come by, and uh, Philippe isn't going to go to chow because you usually eat out of your package the first night you get it. You get good stuff. And uh, he tells them, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to chow. And they said, well, when we come back, we're going to get our stuff. And he goes, yeah, when you come back, you can come have whatever you want. I'm good with that. You're more than welcome to anything you want. And they're like, yeah, we knew we'd get what we want. And so off trucks, and then it's like seven, eight of these guys. <clears throat> and they, they all rush through child and they come back. Here it comes, guys. Here it comes. Seven or eight guys went to the door on their way to chow. And Jamie knows about it. Jamie knows about everything. Back. And the cops would crack the, the, the tier doors, so all the doors are open. But this is San Quentin then. He's talking about San Quentin again. He's got to be. Which is a level two at the point where he's talking about, I believe. They'd crack the tier doors, and they would wait till everybody for that building is finished child and get in, and then they would lock the doors. And then they would relay, unlock them later for yard or showers, whatever. So the guys come back. They go down, and he's... I'm on a, I'm, I'm on AA, and you have AA, and you have AB, and then you have BA, and then you have BB, and he's on the BB side. He's, I don't know what, I don't know where the hell he's at then, but I know if he's on AA and the other guy's on BB, how do you know the conversations at the door? How do you have the head count? Like, <laughs> this dude is a jackass. Back at back bar, way down there at the end. <clears throat> he's like the second cell from the very, very end. So these guys all go down there. You start hearing screaming all the way through the building. You're hearing just scream after scream after scream. Mm. Guards run over there. One guy comes up and he's still on fire. Oh you know? my God. And uh, one guard throws him to the ground, throws a blanket over him. Where'd he get the blanket from? Where'd the blanket come from? Guards don't carry blankets. Guards are running, guards are running, bells are going. Everybody get down, get down, down on your bellies, down on your bellies. <clears throat> guys in the chow hall, everybody down on the floor. You know, doors are locked. People on the streets, park your cars and get on the floor. Um, people in other states, everybody down. Grab your blankets. Somebody might be on fire. We get it, Jamie. This was big. This was the biggest thing probably ever. And Jamie is nowhere near that tier, but he knows everything that's going on. Locked everything. Sitting in the chow hall, you can watch him walking Felipe by. And he's in cuffs. And they're walking him over to medical. And Felipe's got blood all over him. Right? They're walking to medical. And you see a gurney go by with the guy on it that had been burned. You see another gurney go by with a, with a guy laying there that you can see he's bleeding. You see another gurney go by, and this guy's bleeding. You see a third gurney go a fourth gurney go by, and this guy's bleeding, but you know, <clears throat> from his neck and stuff. And then you see him bring these other three guys uh. by in cuffs, and they've got marks on them, but they're not that bad. And they take them right over to into the like. So we know Philippe is almost as bad as Jamie. The thing is, Jamie wouldn't have used a knife. He would have broke all their bones, punched them in the nuts, made their eyes roll back. <laughs> oh my God! Let's see. Let's see where this one goes. The ad seg office. Well. At this point in time, we don't really have inmates working in the clinic at the moment. <clears throat> so we don't really know what's going on.
but but somehow Jamie does. My job is I work in the watch office. I work for the captain. So I read all the, the DARs, the daily activity reports. I get to know everything that goes on. So they get us up. They tell everybody, go back to your cell. So I'm coming through. And there's a the guy who works with me. He's, he's, he works for the lieutenant. We're told, go straight to your jobs. Wait, 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 they go down, and he's, I'm on A, I'm, I'm on AA, and you have AA, and you have AB, and then you have BA, and then you have BB, and he's on the BB side. He's back at back bar, way down there at the end. <clears throat> he's like the second cell from the very, very end. So that these guys all go back. down there. Way oh. through the building, you're hearing just scream after scream the, with a guy laying there that you can see he's bleeding. You see another guy, and, uh, one guard. So we don't really know what's going on. But my job is I work in the watch office. I work for the captain. So I read all the, the DARs, the daily activity reports. I get to know everything that goes on. So they get us up. They tell everybody, go back to your cell. So I'm coming through. And there's a guy who works with me. He's, he's, he works for the lieutenant. We're told, go straight to your jobs. They need you there. <clears throat> we go over. We're sitting in our jobs. Captain walks in and said, did you see anything? I said, just. I just, the reason why I paused, I thought he said the guy works for me. The one that works for the lieutenant. He didn't. The guy's going by. We, we were in chow. Says, well, get, get that typewriter warmed up. He goes, you're going to be typing. He goes, uh, he won't be home for breakfast. He goes, it's going to be a long night. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're sitting there. We get our stuff going. <clears throat> in comes the first report. Four guys are being sent out to the outside hospital due to their injuries. Stab wounds, strangled with a wire cutter, lit on fire with paint thinner, um, you know, and uh, there was like claw marks on one of the guys across his neck and face and stuff. And, uh, then it comes in, it says, Petition, potential assailant, Felipe, and I'm not going to say his last name, but Felipe. Make that up. You made up, he, he's been Felipe this whole time. Now he's Felipe. Just make it up. You made up the front, the first name and the rest of the story. Make up the last name, player. On there. And it lists the ages of the guys. <clears throat> 21, 23, 24. 20, he remembers it clearly. 25, 27, this type of thing. Felipe, 80, you know. <clears throat> then the other lieutenant clerk, he's typing up the lockup order for the three other guys, you know. And he comes over and goes, yeah, they're being locked up for uh, potentially trying to do, uh, you know, a robbery. Oh, my God. I don't think I could take much more of this guy. I know you guys like me to do his videos now and then. And again, I don't even know if it's going to be monetized. This never happened. Who's going to believe, first of all, that seven people are sent after an, one 80-year-old man? And then that that 80-year-old man, this is worse than Michael Thompson. This guy's taking the crown for Michael Thompson. And I said, uh, well, what, what's happening with Felipe? Says, well, they've got him out. They, they've sent him out to the hospital to uh, to have him looked over. Okay, about four o'clock in the morning, I have to. I get notified to send out a, <clears throat> a a recovery team to go and pick up an inmate from the hospital. He gets notified to send out a recovery team as a inmate. He gets told to send out a recovery team. Now, I don't know who's coming back. Felipe comes back. Turns out all the blood on him was not his. None of the blood on him. The only thing he had was he had scraped his foot when, they, when the officers dragged him out because he wasn't wearing shoes. And when they took him off the concrete, he scraped the top of his toes. That was the only injury Felipe had. And he needed to go to the outside hospital for that. <laughs> right? And... uh <clears throat> So they put him in ad seg while the investigation goes on. 
And um, the four guys go to the hospital. And uh, the guy who, who was on fire, was it was from his chest up. And uh, he actually, his ears kind of got melted a little bit. And, you know, his, his eyes weren't going to see quite as well to be oh. and Hair was missing and, you know, burns across his chest and stuff. <clears throat> and uh, one of the other guys had some burns too, but Felipe had used uh, inmate napalm on him. Which is all right. So this guy had paint thinner. Where do you get paint thinner from? I don't care about hobby craft. Where does he get paint thinner from? Right. So he had paint thinner lined up. He had napalm lined up. He had a garrot made out of wire. Um, who knows what the claw marks were from? And. These guys, these guys were seven in a row, like a Bruce Lee movie. They all waited to see what happened to the guy in front of them. Let's see. You boil a pot of water, you put baby oil in it, and you throw Kool-Aid in it. So when you throw it on, the water burns, the baby oil cooks, and the sugar gets in there and will cause infection. Ooh. And it, it's very effective. You know. Well, <clears throat> a few days later, Felipe gets released from Ad Seg. <laughs> he get he come he causes four guys to go to outside hospital and he gets out of ad seg in a couple days let's see where he goes back to the same cell probably for sure he goes back to his cell <laughs> watch this guy's stuff guys come over and give him stuff because they know he probably needs some few things <clears throat> somebody had already gone in and cleaned up his cell all the i think we saw a little bit of this earlier right is that why i knew oh my god hey. so this bottle got jumped on ah. blood and all the stuff like that had been one of the, one of the friends of his cleaned it so just so we're aware, when there's a crime scene like that, the cops go in, they send the ISU, the goon squad, whatever you want to call them, it's really ISU. They take photographs of everything because they're going to try to press charges on people, right? And then when that's all done, they send people in white jumpsuits and the face is covered and they go in there and they clean all the blood. You cannot leave blood. That has to be cleaned. Um, and it's not by your friends. All of the property has to be removed. Everything, that cell is a crime scene. But in Jamie's world, none of that happens. Your friends come and clean up your cell and you get to go right back to it. We get the reports back. All seven of them were charged with attempted robbery. I don't even know if that's even... A a charge in the California Department of Corrections. It may be. I've never heard of it. I've never seen it. Um, my shoot terms, I never had no attempted robbery. I didn't attempt to rob nobody. But um where would they get where would the officers get that information from? It was just an incident. It's prison. Things happen, but where would they get robbery from? Let's see what he says about that. Felipe's story was they all rushed in. And then they just started cutting each other. And one guy lit the other guy on fire. And then I was trying to make a pot of coffee. And one guy took my hot water, threw some oil, oil, oil in it, threw some Kool-Aid in it, and threw it on another guy. I don't know what was going on. I just tried to get out of the way. <laughs> he said, but people were bleeding and blood got over me. I don't know what was happening. I was just doing my best to stay out of the way. I'm an old man. <laughs> so We're done. We're done. He even tried a little accent, you know, but hey, it is what it is. There's Jamie Kennedy. Jamie Kennedy. Why do I always want to call him that? That's the act, comedian guy, actor. Jamie Morgan Kane, the most believable, hardest convict to ever do time in the world. If you liked the video, do me a favor, hit the like. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Let me know what you didn't like about it. Everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.